Barland University is centrally located in Israel. We are today the largest university in terms of number of students on campus, about 22,000, plus another six or 7,000 off campus in various colleges. In the physics department in particular, we have uh, 32 faculty members, in addition to 12 emeriti faculty and about 20 researchers. The department is, is a member in a number of institutes, including the Nano Center, the Resnick Institute for Advanced Technology. We are also partners with the Brain Science, and all of these institutes and all of these inter interactions lead to a tremendous amount of collaboration between various departments, whether it's from biology, chemistry and mathematics or computer science. So our faculty participate in a large variety of interdisciplinary science. The Nanotechnology Institute was established uh, seven years ago as a major investment for research uh, at the university. And the beauty of the institute is that uh, we all sit together at the same building, uh, even though I belong to physics where my students are coming from and my colleague is coming from life sciences. It's very advanced in terms of the equipment and infrastructure that we have here. And we do have uh, cutting edge uh, research and studies uh, in all the disciplines that are related to nan nanotechnology. My uh, research is on network uh, theory. And network theory is now called network science since a network became very useful for many different disciplines. The bar -Lan Institute of Technology is a great place because what we are doing in our research is using a network to predict, to manipulate new type of physics. And we are going to experimentalists, theoreticians in physics, to try to even make this type of materials. So we want to make new materials with new properties based on network theory. The various group of soft matter physics in Berlin University are dealing with problems that are uh, on the cutting edge of contemporary science and technology. In particular, there are many works that are on the edge between nanotechnology and biology, like the transport of DNA through nanopores and the dynamics of a single molecule in a living cell. The physics department at Berlin University is always open for new ideas and is willing to support faculty and students in their research even in non-conventional directions. I guess this is a dream of every scientist. We've always concentrated on preparing the, our students uh, to give them the skills that they will need in any, in any setting that they go to afterwards. If they choose an academic position, they need certain skills and they should be able to get them in their education here. And if they choose industrial careers, and there are many industrial careers that are open to our graduates from high-tech industries to defense to uh, biotechnology and medicine, um, they will get both the technical skills they need and the way of thinking that a physicist needs to be able to succeed in whatever they attempt to do. Studying here in bar -Ilan, you're encouraged to, to find your own path, to implement your own ideas, and you, you've got a really a supporting environment for that. I was very lucky to be involved in the building from the very beginning of an atom cooling lab, and that means being involved in every aspect of physics. One of the outstanding opportunities that students have at, in the department is actually we have a lot of collaborations also with industry. A lot of industrial um, firms who want to perform some research or development project will turn to us and we welcome them. They join in the lab working with students and in that sense the students get an opportunity to learn what, what's interesting to industry and how they work. And we also get to do applied research in our labs for the mutual benefit of both. The students in my lab just enjoy sitting in the junction, really in the junction, between very basic science and the best technology. I mean, what we're doing is really the basic stuff of quantum physics. We look at the foundations of quantum physics, and because of that, they can develop anywhere in academia for very basic research if they want to do that. On the other hand, we don't just use, we are actually developing cutting-edge technologies of laser physics and laser science. 
So if they want to go to industry, they just have the best starting point that they could dream of. I think the future for the university and the department in particular is very bright. Our department is growing. Its average age is actually young. We are still recruiting new faculty members. And there are lots of exciting opportunities in both facilities on campus, which any researcher who comes to the university can participate in, and in pursuing world-class research of the highest caliber.